My cancer journey began in January of 2002. I noticed rectal bleeding and I knew that that was a symptom of colon cancer. Um, during my well woman checkup in April, I mentioned the rectal bleeding to my OBGYN. He did a digital rectal exam and uh, told me I had hemorrhoids. So I made an appointment with my general practitioner. At that appointment, a scope was done and a mass was found. So I had a referral, but instead of a referral for hemorrhoid surgery, I had a referral for a biopsy. And of course, it was confirmed I had rectal cancer. My treatment began with radiation and chemo. Um, and then I had surgery. At the point of surgery, um, the lymph nodes were checked and my cancer was deemed stage three. Um, during this time, I was also told uh, that there could be a genetic link and that my siblings should be screened. I told both my brother and sister and uh, felt certain they would be screened, uh, but each chose not to. So two years after my cancer diagnosis, um, I was out of state visiting my youngest son and I received a phone call that my sister was hospitalized with unexplained vomiting um, and that she had had some tests and it was inconclusive because she had fluid. I hung up that phone and I told my husband, this is colon cancer and it's bad. Um, the next day it was confirmed after a colonoscopy that she did have colon cancer. Our first conversation after that, she told me that test was nothing, I should have been screened. So from the point of diagnosis to her death was 75 days. So I knew at that point that I had to tell my story. We have made remarkable strides in the cancer treatment, um, but we really need to realize that prevention and early detection is key to survival of this disease. And I know, you know, if people will be screened, that that, that success rate will go up. You know, when you're first diagnosed with cancer, you think it's a death sentence, but I'm living proof that, that it's, it's not always such. Um, we've made remarkable advances in the treatment of this disease. Um, I can remember doing things early on and seeing long-term survivors and thinking, oh man, you know, will I be that person? Will I be able to uh, see my children graduate? And will I see their, be able to attend their weddings? And, and now I've witnessed the birth of that grandbaby and, and each day is a gift. 14 years later, I'm thriving, not just surviving. Uh, during my treatment, I read that there's an obligation of the cured that you have to give back. So it's very important to me to give back to Colon Cancer Alliance because they gave me so much. I always consider um, the friends that I've made through Colon Cancer Alliance, my semi-colon friends. You know, we've all lost part of our colon. And Colon Cancer Alliance has put us together in an and given us this opportunity to share our knowledge and to share our stories and to get that word out there. And, it, and I know that if more people are being screened, but we still have that lack. You know, we, we're, we've got this gap where people are just not talking about it. And if we can get out there and talk more about this cancer. And then I always guide people that have recently been diagnosed to Colon Cancer Alliance because I know they're going to receive the support they need through this amazing organization. Not only um, the emotional support, but in, in some cases also financial. I'm Vicki Barrio. I'm from Huntsville, Texas. I'm a stage three colon cancer survivor and thriver.